An advocacy group, the All Progressives Congress Professional Forum, is proposing an APC presidential town hall meeting where the party's candidate, Bola Tinubu, can address Nigerians. The leader of the group and former governor of Bauchi State, Isa Yuguda, at a meeting with the APC national chairman, Abdullahi Adamu, in Abuja, also informed uh, the chairman of the forum's intention to organize a retreat uh, for the members of the National Working Committee to rub minds with professionals on good governance. While welcoming the forum, Adamu referred to the group as one of the best kept and untapped secrets of the party for good governance. So, Mr. Chairman, it is important that uh, uh, we, as a professional forum and professional arm of uh, the APC, uh, uh, be encouraged to play the role that we are supposed to play. We are also planning for uh, APC uh, presidential candidate town hall meeting. Uh, the whole idea to uh, of uh, doing that exercise is to enable the candidate uh, with the professionals under the uh, town hall meeting at the town hall meeting to talk to Nigerians and further emphasize the fact that we are prepared to uh, take over government and we are also prepared to uh, refocus the country towards uh, you know uh, higher productivity. The experiences that you have gathered over time will be a very, very strong guide in what we do. I therefore hope and pray that when we call upon you to have a share of your expertise, you will not hesitate to volunteer to join and uh, to give the best that you can over any issue that you may be required to make some input or some contributions. Oh, we now have Arise News Analyst Frank Tieti and Dr. Sam Amadi joining us for more on these stories. Thank you both for joining us on the news tonight. Uh, let me begin with you, Dr. Sam Amadi, and beginning with the visit to Governor Nielsen Wike of River State. Uh, Peter Obi of the Labour Party is making a second visit there. Uh, something that keeps resounding or reverberating in the Labour Party when you listen is that they do not need structure to win the elections come 2023. What should we make of these meetings with established governors who have structures? Well, it's a smart way of, of building structures, mm -hmm. I mean, by true proxy. Uh, when the Labour Party say they don't have structure, I, I think what they really mean is, look, uh, we don't think that our lack of physical presence, Hitato, does not constitute uh, uh, an on a barrier that can't overcome. I mean, nobody can say there is a structure. And when they say that we are structured, humans are structured, they are right. But the argument about structure is that Politics is, you know, it's a game of uh, structure, interaction, and numbers. And therefore, what structure delivers for you is that, uh, like we, we talk on economics, is it's like um, reducing the transaction cost of doing something. So you have the structure that they, they can help you do what they cannot do. So these visits actually is a way of seeking for structure. But the bigger picture here is second time. Uh, how are they going to work together? What's the kind of MO you're going to get in this kind of meeting? Would they now stay in PDP and support P2B? Are they presaging their exit from the party? And this is interesting because this, this meeting happened the day that uh, there was supposed to be uh, a reconciliation meeting was, was built to take place between the Tiku group and Wiki group. And of course, we heard that it couldn't happen because uh, the PDP leaders were in Adamawa for a big um, you know, party oh. event. But you see, the point here is at this point, it looks like the prospect of a real reconciliation doesn't look good. The reason right. is because, I mean, if you're going to be having this kind of meeting uh, when you are still, you have a presidential aspirant, a presidential candidate, and the opposition party is strong, growing, it definitely suggests that you don't have strong, good intent for your candidate. So at this point, some of these meetings could actually be deep breakers, they, they could suggest to both parties that maybe um, we are getting to, we are crossing the Rubicon at a point in which the party will roll off the carpet. Mm. Right. So let's bring in Frank Tietje. What 
do you make of these meetings? I mean, it looks like, uh, yes, Omweke, the governor of River State, his home has become a mecca or political mecca of uh, sorts. And it's the question of who really hasn't visited uh, yes, Omweke. What do you make of the Peter Obi meeting for the second time with uh, Wike? Is it really about Peter Obi looking for structure? Or is it about a Wike looking for an alternative? You know, there is uh, not much we know about the details of these meetings. But certain things are clear. For example, it appears uh, Governor Yeson Wike is still reeling from the reality of the defeat of, uh, 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 in the last PDP primaries. And perhaps he is embarking on a sort of coping mechanism to, you know, uh, assuage uh, his uh, bruised uh, senses. If not, he is trying to uh, define himself as a political enigma who is now having a reputation for being inconsistently uncertain when it comes to these visits that uh, are incomprehensible. You can imagine he has been cutting uh, APC governors, cutting strange bedfellows in the, in the political space, and then leaving many of his followers and political watchers to be guessing, wondering what he's up to. You know, persons who are aggrieved in a political party, uh, persons who are aggrieved in a political party can uh, actually can do two things. But Wike imprisoned himself when he said, when he declared on the a convention ground that he wasn't going to leave the party. But after the convention, he was obviously aggrieved, and then he also didn't go to court. So he's, he's, he's in a quandary. So all of these things, I'm sure the band is going through a political process, you know, so it's about him. And I, I beg to disagree that it's not, you know, clear to the extent that it's, one can say it's about Peter B or structure. It's about the man who is searching for options and how to deploy his hard and, you know, leadership that he has in the PDP. So I don't think Governor Yeso Wiki is helping anybody at this time. We are just going to keep watching more closely to know where he is headed to. Well, he's keeping the suspense real good. Everybody's yeah. keeping their fingers crossed. Uh, I mean, Dr. S uh, Sam Amadi, the governors of the 36 states of Nigeria will be meeting mm -hmm. tomorrow. And it's coming on the heels of a lot of economic and in economic challenges and insecurity in, across the country. It would be surprising if these two don't dominate that meeting, but what do we expect the governors to really focus on tomorrow as regards the economy? What really can they do? I think it's a, uh, an important meeting because uh, we used to say, oh, Nigeria is in a bad spot. We actually, if ever we were in a bad spot, this is it now. If you look at the economic fundamentals, um, everything has gone uh, you know, to, to, the, if you, to the gutters. Our, our, we, can't, we are actually spending more to service debts than even we're generating. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, if you look at inflation that has you know, hit 15 year or more peak for the first time, uh, it means that, look, and of course it looks even more, uh, more gloomy as the days go. So I think first they have to sit back. They have brought issues around, around raising tax, but the first thing they have to do is to think around what can they give up. What can they give up to create you know, trust factor? Nigeria actually needs maybe more taxation, not in terms of general tax, but of course, look at property tax. You look at some of the uh, excise tax of, for goods that actually uh, we have low elasticity, meaning that you are going to get more revenue. You look at some import um, custom duties increase, some of the luxury goods and item. But then all those are built around the bedrock of trust. So if the governors can to tomorrow decide to you know take off some of the things they are doing and many of them are still flying uh, private jets <laughs> up and down <laughs> if they take those hard bullets reduce their to entourage agreements at that level then they can look forward towards improving the tax revenue because essentially Nigeria has two re revenue stream the the, uh, the foreign exchange receives through largely oil and small export we do mm. and taxation so this co economy needs in, in, in of real revenue coming right. from production. So it's a lot, middle to long time to re incentivize the structure and create mm. a productive mo uh, momentum. But at the short to medium term, mm. reducing the cost of governance, and it starts with very core to the bone. We've seen examples across the world 
cut to the bone at the state level, then the federal government should do the same. And then we can get back to the Nigerian people with a suggestion of some reasonable tax increase for non-essentials and luxury right. items. Property tax everywhere. Mm. You raise a lot more money uh, than so that we can be able to solve this problem. But again, they have to show leadership by cutting off very many uh, you know, expensive, costly travels, first, uh, hiring private jets, and you know, kind of feeding themselves fat, wasting money everywhere. Right. So prudence, prudence, prudence. They have to show example tomorrow. And then they okay. can go forward and get a fiscal policy that helps the country. All right, uh, Frank Tete, it looks like Dr. Sam Amadi is laying uh, at the doorstep of the governors in fixing the economy. Uh, don't forget there's the Paris Club refund uh, conundrum that's pitted the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, Malami, against the, the governors. That's on the one hand. Uh, they're not only discussing economy tomorrow, they'll always also be talking about uh, Nigeria's security challenges. What do you expect really from this meeting tomorrow? Well, I'll start by desisting from bashing these governors, but they are coming face to face with the consequences of their laziness and profligacy, as my learned senior had uh, expressed. And what they should first of all tell themselves is, uh, is to ac actually apologize to Nigerians and uh, atone for their uh, uh, high level of irresponsibility in terms of lack, uh, not, not providing innovative leadership to the peculiar situations that we had in Nigeria. First and foremost, we had a federal government and a whole number of um, uh, APC governments across the state that told Nigerians that they were going to provide, I mean, provide a structure for state police. And we are approaching eight years. That was never debated. Governors are just coming to terms. They appear to be waking up from their long slumber uh, and coming to the reality that the Buhari days, the cloud of the Buhari days is just, uh, you know, sweeping away. And they're just now seeing things clearly that it was, they didn't have anything at all to offer to the people. No state police, no organized form of security at local levels to deal with, the, an, a, 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 you know, an incipient situation. It was staring us in the face in 2015. We, 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 we've had enough uh, history of what we're going to expect at, at this time. We are, even lucky and should be glad that it's not worse than what we are expecting now. So the governors failed in providing security for the people that elected them. But when it comes to uh, in the economy, we're talking about persons who never create, you know, you know, in the various states, I don't want to mention any state so because this is, an, an, I mean, let's do pure analysis. But we see people as governors who did not think of improving economic structures of their state, but merely depending on oil money, I mean, it's enough to give excuses that it's as a result of oil theft. Oh, well, that may not really be the, 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 the case. There are countries that didn't have the kind of uh, resources that we have in this country that have survived very well um, because of governments that, uh, that think out of the box. So I hope that they are coming with an army of advisors, economic advisors, who will tell them the hard truth of what to do about the economy and the economy of the state. You see, it's as, it's as good as if governors exist, the state governments exist just to collect money without thinking of what to do to exist as, you know, separate entities of the, in the Federation to take care of their people, to protect their people and to build, uh, you know, smaller economies that can stand on their own. Virtually all the 30 state governors failed in developing any strong economy in the state. So they are coming tomorrow, they're coming tomorrow, to, they should, first and foremost, they should tell themselves the truth that they have failed and then look forward to asking experts to give them those hard solutions that they need to follow. Unfortunately, we've lost this eight years. The governors did not wake up to their responsibilities to work closely with the federal government to deliver the dividends of well, it depends whether we ever have the dividends of democracy at all. Okay. So it's, 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 it's a clear case of irresponsibility, mm. laziness and lack of innovation, but I, I, we hope that they tell themselves the truth tomorrow. Well, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. Samamadi, I saw you nodding at some point to Frank Tate's uh, submissions. I wonder if you totally agree. And are we not speaking to the brick wall with less than six, seven months to the next elections where majority of these governors 
will not be returning to office because they're serving now their second term. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to respond to that, and then let's talk about the APC and Bola Hakmet Tinubu, uh, the group asking him, you know, let's organize a town hall meeting where he can address Nigerians. He is one of the presidential candidates we've not really heard from interact with the people. First, uh, let's start uh, th that last request. I, I think, in a sense, uh, the APC professionals, uh, they are right. They fancy themselves as having, they, they want to play more offense. This is about mainstreaming themselves into the, into the campaign. You know, They say they have technocrats with skills, and so they want to be part of that campaign. But again, on a bigger scale, it tells a story around the fact that they need the, 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 the candidate to speak more to the people. Uh, although campaign has not started, this is actually the time to do non political engagement to, to, to show what kind of ideas you have and also focus group meetings to get ideas from professionals. So I think it's a great good idea but the question is is it strategically right or tactically right for a presidential candidate that's being rumored to not be in the best of health and uh, you know stability. Oftentimes town halls could be tricky you know with with all kinds of unscripted mm -hmm. you know moments but again back to uh, the question around the economic development. The critical problem here is that, look, the incentive structure of politics does not allow for any innovation like my friend Tete would like, or even serious thoughts. The state, the Council Why of State, because, see, because right now, most of these governors are either running for Senate or working hard to make their successor win, mm -hmm. or they themselves are also leading, think about it, a country like Nigeria, that actually there's no, even though it's not legally uh, wrong, but it's morally wrong and functionally inefficient to have governors with that APC or PDP, run presidential campaign. The debate, why should a governor leave his responsibility to run, to manage a campaign? Why should a minister leave his to manage a campaign? It's never done anywhere else, mm. any civil, because see, the idea of being governor of, or minister is taken as if it has no functional relevance. It's just like decorative, honorific. This actually calls for 24-7 executive attention. So this governor, this, the political structure, the center doesn't support it. And again, this is very important you don't really can't now begin to do this major heavy lifting mm. because first i don't think this council council of state is actually very useful if you look look at the things that go there resolutions they never push the needle because it has no binding authority because yeah. it, it, it's just maybe exotetry it's more like a peer review session a talk shop of a sort it doesn't create that level of policy that's implementable and if the presidency does not really care much about the outcome of those the deliberations, they don't get fixed. Right. So, so really, it's be wrong or maybe too much to expect that okay. after tomorrow, we're going to have a big bank that will build a momentum that will really change things. Unfortunately, we are running down okay. the clock. Uh, All and, right. Um, uh, very quickly, politics, uh, politics. Frank Tetia. Yes, this APC professional forum is asking, proposing uh, that uh, Bola Tinubu should have a town hall with them. Is that indicative of the fact that this... Uh, conversations haven't even been happening between uh, the presidential candidate of the APC and the professionals within the party that Adamu says are the best kept and untapped secret of uh, the party. What do you make of it? Yes, Bola Metinubu needs to dispel the gerontocratic uh, baggage that is on him at this time. That is an old man, too old to govern, and that he is not actually, you know, coordinating his senses so correctly in a manner that should t that can tackle the her Herculean problems that Nigeria has faced. So, if any group of professionals in that manner uh, is trying to put together that kind of meeting, it's a welcome idea, and uh, it, it will help the presidential candidate of the APC quite a lot. And then, uh, uh, but again, I hope that uh, with the several videos that have been trending over the past uh, few months online, we showed the presidential candidate of the APC as a man not to, uh, suffering from one form of senility or the other. I, I hope that they will do a lot of homework right, because some of these things can actually backfire and then uh, become talking points that uh, will not only ridicule the party, but the entire uh, you know, country. So uh, Bola Metinibu is no doubt a front, run, uh, front liner, a front runner in this um, uh, race, right. and a, a possible winner. But to come and, I mean, expose him in such a manner, uh, it okay. has to be well choreographed. If not, it could spell trouble. Right, Frank uh, would need to put it out there. 
uh, Tinubu's health is not on the table. We're not even talking about that. The that. issue is, is he able, does he have the capacity? Should he be having conversations around how to fix security, uh, fix, you know, the economy, and even corruption, at least the three planks on which the APC came into power in 2015. Thank you, both of you gentlemen, for joining us on Newsnight.